Good morning. My name is Cassandra, and I'd like to welcome you to Worship at 9, and thank you for taking the time to worship with us today or to watch later online. Today's theme is the blessing of forgiveness, and we look forward to Keith sharing with us later in our worship time. Please continue to fill in the I Am Blessed cards, which you'll find at our refreshment area in the back of the church, and please hang them up before you leave. Please fill in the connection card in the pew and drop it with your church offering in the box at the doors as you leave. Your support and generosity makes our ministry here happen. And for that, we say a huge thank you to everyone. We just want to remind you that we have a staff nursery available for toddlers and children can come with me to Kids Zone after our morning worship songs. There'll be a congregational meeting on Sunday, November 5th, following our 1030 worship to approve the slate of church officers for 2024. And please don't rush off after worship. Grab a coffee and water, because I know Keith would love to chat with you in the back. Now let's watch this week's blessing video. I'm Paul Carver. I'm the principal at Lincoln McCamas Elementary School. This is my second year with Hutchison and the second year working with the First Presbyterian Church. Um, the question that I am asked right now is, how am I being blessed? Uh, or how do I see the blessing the service and the partnership that we have uh, and, and I think maybe a more appropriate one would be how haven't we been blessed uh, the church has, has helped us with prayer partners and with um, you know gifts to our school and right now we're in the service today which is a huge blessing for our school this year we're merging two buildings together and we have students entering the building tomorrow with furniture in the hallways and boxes everywhere so um, really that's that's the huge blessing part is not necessarily the specifics, but just being together, being uh, able to work together with whatever comes up. Um, you know, it's my goal to include the community of Hutchison with our school, and the First Presbyterian Church is, is definitely one of our, our biggest supporters, and um, you know, I, I just enjoy it that we can laugh and, and have fun together and get a lot of work done. Uh, it's just such a, a great partnership that we have. Switch my microphone on, it'll be a good idea. Welcome. It's a cold one. It's warm in here. And uh, we're here to worship our God. This is a new song. And hopefully you like it and hopefully we get through it. Cheryl's still struggling from a lost voice, but I think we'll find it again. Almost. But let's just worship. Yeah. those walls that we called sin and shame they were like prisons that we couldn't escape but he came and he died and he rose those walls are rubble now remember those giants we called death and grave like mountains that stood in our way, but he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. This is our God, this is who he is, he loves us. This is our God, this is what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross. Let heaven and earth proclaim, this is our God, King Jesus. Remember that fear that took our breath away, faith so weak that we could barely pray, but he heard every word, every whisper. He's the 
pulled me out of that pit. He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of that sin? Nobody but Jesus. Who rescued me from that grave? Yahweh, Yahweh. Who goes to glory and praise? Nobody but Jesus. Who rescued me from that grave? Yahweh, Yahweh. as we said we're talking about the the blessing of forgiveness and often we can't forgive ourselves we 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 think we're not good enough we think we yeah there's more that we can do and of course there is but to Jesus you're enough and this song's called you say
times we say that. Let's just pray. Just still ourselves. Lord, we come before you today and there's a chill in the earth. It's cold outside. But Lord, we ask that you will warm our hearts with your presence. That being here in this place will bring us peace. Will help us to settle ourselves, to clear our heads, to come closer to you. Lord, we think of all the turmoil across the world and we ask for your peace. Lord, we live in a world that doesn't forgive easily. Lord, help us to forgive. Help us to forget. Lord, our minds are full of propaganda and, and words of hatred, of injustice, of lack of understanding. And we ask, Lord, that you will give us wisdom not to follow the crowd, but to follow you, to listen to you. Lord, we ask it all in your precious name. Let me read to you today uh, from Matthew, 20, or Matthew 18, 21 to 35. And I'm going to read from the message uh, translation. At that point, Peter got up the nerve to ask, Master, how many times do I forgive a brother or sister who hurts me? Seven? Jesus replied, seven? Hardly. Try 70 times seven. The kingdom of God is like a king who decided to square accounts with his servants. As he got underway, one servant was brought before him who had run up a debt of $100,000. And he couldn't pay up, so the king ordered the man, along with his wife, children, and goods, to be auctioned off at the slave market. The poor wretch threw himself at the king's feet and begged, Give me a chance, and I'll pay it all back. Touched by his plea, the king let him off, erasing the debt. The servant was no sooner out of the room when he came across one of his fellow servants who owed him $10. He seized him by the throat and demanded, pay up now. The poor wretch threw himself down and begged, give me a chance and I'll pay it back but he wouldn't do it. He had him arrested and put in jail until the debt was paid. When the other servants saw what was going on, they were outraged and brought a detailed report to the king. The king summoned the man and said, you evil servant, I forgave your entire debt when you begged me for mercy. Shouldn't you be compelled to be merciful to your fellow servant who asked for mercy? The king was furious and put the screws to the man until he paid back his entire debt. And that's exactly what my Father in heaven is going to do to each one of you who doesn't forgive unconditionally anyone who asks for mercy. This is the word of the Lord. If only I could go back and change some things, set things straight. I wish I had a do-over. I've made choices. I've lost out. I've wished a thousand times I could go back and try again. It's hard not to imagine what might have been. If I had just stopped to think. If I had just done as I was told. If I hadn't thought I knew it all. 
Why didn't I just take a few deep breaths? Took one second to listen. Maybe my life would be better. Maybe there wouldn't be such a high price to pay. Things would be different now. I wouldn't have so many regrets. But is everything lost? Can I just get a do-over? Is there a way back to new beginnings? Because regret can mean a new beginning. When it's given to the one who produces a repentance. A repentance that delivers me from my grief. The one who takes my mistakes. And somehow redeems me through them. Who tells me I'm not the sum total of all my regrets? He tells me not to look back. Because there's nothing there to see. I am not my mistakes. He is faithful and just to forgive me. I just have to ask him. And then I can look straight for it. Forget what is behind me. And strain towards what is ahead. And walk away with all regrets erased by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Every day I'm given a clean slate. A clean slate? I get a clean slate. clean slate. We'd all love to have a clean slate, wouldn't we, every day? Have the slate wiped clean, even to have our schedules wiped clean so we can do whatever we want to do at that moment. I was wondering, what baggage, or do we even realize what baggage we carry with us in the church today? What baggage do we waken up with and carry around each day of the week. And maybe you feel like those people in our video hoping for a do-over or having the slate wiped clean. We would all love to be able to hit that delete button, wouldn't we? If we could hit a delete button in life and all the stuff that we're carrying around, all the weight that's on our shoulders would disappear. And I think if we're all open and honest with God today, we will admit that the baggage that we carry around would have a heavy sticker, you know, one of those big red heavy stickers slapped on it if we went to the airport check-in. You know what I'm saying. We carry a lot of stuff. And it all looks different for every one of us, but there's a lot of stuff that we're carrying around. But I have a real important public announcement to make today. It's time to put the bags down. Okay? It's time to put the bags down that we're struggling with. All this weight that we're carrying around. And to walk away and leave them. Set them down and walk away. We don't, and you and I don't even need to ever carry even a hand luggage with us. There's no reason for us to carry anything because God wants to carry our load, carry the weight, carry the burdens. There's no reason for us to carry things around when Jesus has already forgiven us. Jesus has already forgiven us and yet we still carry this stuff. All of us, me included, no, no different. God's word tells us to let go of our hurts and resentment and then to forgive others. You've got to release your hurt instead of rehearsing it over and over and over again. Matthew 18, Jesus tells the story of the king that we've just read and the servant. And verse 27 says that the servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. Canceled the debt and let him go. And just as the king canceled the debt of his servant, God sent Jesus Christ to pay for our debt, to pay for our sin. Everything you've ever done wrong, everything that I have ever done wrong in our lives has already been paid and taken care of by Jesus. 
the bill's paid. You know the way, we, if you've ever happened to you, when you've, it's happened to us a couple of times, where we've gone out for a meal, we've at the meal, and we asked for the, the bill, and the waitress or the waiter has said, actually, somebody else is taking care of that. And I think, get me a dessert then. No, I don't, no. But you, f- you feel, wow, somebody would do that for us. How neat is that? That somebody would pay for my food or pay for something. And yet, Jesus forgave us everything. And we don't get as excited about that forgiveness. And the blessings that come from that forgiveness, to know that everything is wiped away, we just take it for granted. Oh, Jesus did that. We don't get as excited about Jesus paying our debt as someone paying for our food. We have got to let go of things. Jesus has paid it all. It's done and dusted. We don't have to go back over it again. So why is it that we keep clinging on to the past? Why is it that it's so important to us to to, to carry things around with us that have been pulling us down and hurting us for years? Why do we want to keep it? What, what is it about it that we want to keep when Jesus has said, "Forget, I've forgotten about it. It's done. But we keep wanting to cling to the past, cling to the things that hurt us. The question this morning, the question every day of our lives is, are we willing to let go of our mistakes and our hurts? The Bible teaches very clearly that we can't receive these blessings until we're willing to forgive. We have to forgive. How can we receive the forgiveness of God that God has shown if we're not willing to forgive others, if we're not willing to forgive ourselves? It's a big issue. If you want to be forgiven, you need to be forgiving. And that's not easy. Forgiveness has to become a lifestyle. What I mean by that is it's just not a one-off thing. You need it, and I need it every day in our lives. This needs to become the pattern of our lives that we're willing to forgive the way Jesus forgave, to have his grace, his love. It's a continual process that we're in that will bring you so much joy and so much blessing when you're willing to open up and just forgive. Look, we all know that God sent Jesus to die for us, to wipe away our sins. And why, why would he do that? When, 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 when we are such a mess, when we keep continually sinning and letting him down, it's, be, it's because we would say this at home, I think you would say it here too, you're the apple of God's eye. I wonder if you ever thought, thought that, that you're the apple of God's eye. You're special. You're God's delight, actually. Now, that's amazing news, I think. If God can love me and you and forgive us, surely it has to be time for us to forgive ourselves. Can you forgive yourself? Can you let go? Can you set the bags down? Can you walk without any baggage. Mm, I don't know whether you can. I think we all carry some. But some of us think the more baggage we carry, the more God's going to love us. And God says, no. I love you and I want you to put those bags down. I don't think there's any sort of order to forgiveness. Like first we have to forgive ourselves, then we can forgive others or vice versa. I think it's something that we have to work on all of our forgivenesses. Forgivenesses, that's hard to say. At the one time, it's, it's part of who we have to become. You know, I used to think that I was the only one who made mistakes. Do you ever feel like that? 
I did some pretty stupid things in high school days. I've told you that before. And I, didn't, I did things that I'm not very proud of. When I look back and I think, why, oh, why did I do that? You know, perhaps you've done things in your past that you look back at and you cringe. It makes you cringe when you think about it. You think, that's not, not me. Was that me? Is that the way I, yeah. And I don't see today when I look down, you're all heroes today for coming out in the cold. But what I have to tell you is I don't see any angels. I don't see anybody down there with a the halo. Oh, there, there it is. <laughs> I was going to try and get Tom to shine some sort of light above my head to make it look like a halo, but it wouldn't make any difference because we're not angels. We're not saints. We, we may mess up. I was so certain that I was Mr. Mistake. Mr. Mess it all up. And I believe that God wouldn't have anything to do with me because of the way I was. But it was in that mess. It was with all that baggage that I was carrying that God came to meet me. He came to meet you with everything that we're carrying around. And he says, I, I can take that. Will you give it to me? And for such a long time, I used to think, yes, God, take it. I want to have it. Yeah, take it. I don't want to have that in my life anymore. Take it. Go. Or I want to forgive that person, so take it. I forgive them. And then I take it all back again. I sort of run after them and grab the bags again and say, that's all right, I'll carry them for another while. All right? It's just the way we seem to be. And I remember hearing this voice when I was in this situation of thinking, God doesn't want anything to do with me. I'm too messed up. I remember hearing this little voice in my head saying, Keith, there's no human being who has ever lived who have not made mistakes hurt people, harm themselves in various ways, and fail to act the way I want them to. You see, I was wallowing. Anybody like to wallow? Anybody? No? I, I, I was wallowing in my guilt and shame. Like that song, that new song said. Remember those walls we build of guilt and shame? And I was missing the whole point that God would forgive and forget my past mistakes and failures when I would come and surrender my life to him. We need to grab hold of the fact that God wipes away all our past mistakes and forgives us when we come to him and we say sorry. And he forgives and he tells us to go and forgive others as I have forgiven you. God blesses when we forgive as he forgives. God blesses your life when you forgive yourself. Because you don't really need to forgive yourself because God has already done it. Why do we think we always need to do one better than God? Than Jesus, the price that he paid, and we still think, I need to pay a little bit. God said, no, you don't. We seem to have this complex that makes us to want to feel guilty and shameful, the wrong that we have done, the hurt that we're responsible for, the sin we have committed, the guilt and shame can all feel overwhelming and instead of letting it go, we pull it tighter. Feels like a heavy weight that we carry around. We don't know how to let go of it. And I was thinking about this and I was thinking when, when, we, when we say, I don't know how to let go of it, I'm really saying, God, I don't trust you. I don't trust you to take my sin, to take this baggage so that I can be free. I haven't enough faith. I haven't enough faith. There are so many people today who believe they're not worthy of forgiveness. 
they've come to that conclusion like I had that God would have nothing to do with them. Can you imagine the prodigal son in that famous parable? Imagine him coming home and the father says, let's have a party. And the son says, no, I'd rather just go to my room. I just want to go to my room. I don't deserve to be celebrated. I'm not worthy of your forgiveness. And the father in the story did not see only the bad choices that his son had made, the bad actions that his son had committed. He saw the potential and the promise that existed in his son. And he longed for a new and better future for his son who had been lost and now was found. Our inability to forgive ourselves keeps us from entering into the party that God wants to throw for us. When we come back to God, when we say sorry, take our baggage, take our mess, forgive me, we're stepping into a new future, a better future, a future with all the desires that God has for us, like the father had for his son in that story of the prodigal son. We start to become the people with the potential to be who God actually created us to be. Churches are full of Christians, my friends, who can't forgive themselves. Today in Hutchison, everybody that goes in and sits in a pew, there's going to be so many who can't forgive themselves, who are still feeling this guilt. They sit in the pews or, or in chairs, and they're wrapped up in this chain, with these chains of can't let go. Chains from their past, from their bad actions, and healing can't come in that type of environment. We're stuck and we need to be set free. It's time for us to let go of our guilt and shame. It's time to break free and be made whole. Archbishop Desmond Tutu wrote these words, no one is bad and none among us should be defined as the sum total of our worst actions. None of us is an offender, liar, betrayer, or monster. We are all fragile and flawed humans who may lie or steal or betray. We are fragile and thawed humans who commit offenses against others. And when we do that thing, these things, we are not monsters. We are human beings who have become separated from our own goodness and from the goodness of God. My friends, please hear me today when I tell you that you're not the sum of your sins and mistakes. The scriptures frequently remind us that God loves us unconditionally. God is often described as merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I love that. I love the fact that my God loved me when I was unlovable. God loved you when you were unlovable. When we didn't want anything to do with him, he still loved us. He still waited for us. He still watched for us. That's the God we follow. That's the God we love. That's the God who forgives. good news is this morning that new life comes out of the ashes of our old life.
you believe that? Do you believe that we can rise like we would say the phoenix from the ashes? Several passages in the Bible remind us that God forgives us by choosing not to remember our sins. Our God sees what we cannot see. God sees us totally different than we see ourselves. God sees all the worst we have done, but he sees all the good and the potential in each of us that is to come. And God chooses you. And God chooses to wipe away all our mistakes. And God believes in you. Can I encourage you to accept God's forgiveness? It'll be easier to forgive yourself if you know God's forgiveness. And in fact, the more I think about this, the more I think, if I know that God has forgiven me, why do I need to forgive myself? Why do I need to do that? Because he has done it all. We have been created by God in the image of God. We are his beloved children. And we cannot change the past. But we can let God bless our future. It's my hope that this church will be known as a community of believers who love, who forgive, who support each other. May we strive to build a culture of forgiveness in our church where we are all accepted. As the body of Christ, we are to show a spirit of gentleness, kindness, humility, compassion, and forgiveness. That's who we're supposed to be. When we're made new in Christ, we are transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. So let's break free of these guilt chains that we carry around, the shame that binds us, Accept his forgiveness, know his peace, let go and lighten the load. So earlier you got a little card handed to you. And it says, I think it says, it's time to let go. Or question mark. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down on the back of it anything that you're still carrying around. Any guilt, any shame. Maybe a name of someone that you can't forgive. Don't know what it is. Everybody's a little bit different. But I want you to write down something because we all have something. And then as Cheryl and I sing the last song, I want you to come up and there's a little tub basket here on the front seat. And I want you to come up and I want you to take that piece of paper and I want you to tear it and rip it up and throw it in that basket. And then I want you to walk away and leave it there. Because we need to let go of what's holding us back so that God can do the things that he wants to do in each of our lives. Let, it, let go, walk away free from guilt and shame and know that God has forgiven you and you can forgive yourself and you can be the person that God knows that you are. Let's pray and then we'll sing. Lord, Lord, we just find it hard to accept your forgiveness because we know how messed up our lives have been. We know how much we have let you down. And and we're not sure what to do. We know that you forgive us and yet we doubt. We think maybe we need to carry it around just to make ourselves feel a little bit different. And yet you want to take everything away. You want to set us free. So Lord, help us to let go of the past. We are redeemed in Jesus' name. And if we have never said, Lord, I want you to forgive me. I want you to take my, my life and I want to focus on you. I want to become closer to you. Maybe that's something that we need to write down in that card. Lord, I need to give you my life. 
I need to hand it all over to you and say, direct me, bless me, forgive me. So Lord, today as we write down these things, as we come and we rip them up, as we leave them, we know that you have forgotten them even before we have written them. Before the ink is dry, you have forgiven us and you have said, walk away free. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for paying the price for forgiving us. And through that forgiveness comes blessings that we couldn't imagine. Amen. So I invite you as we sing this last song. And don't come if you don't want to. Please don't feel this is a, this is just a little symbol of saying, I'm not going to let go. I'm going to give it to you. Sing the song of ages to the land. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above the Lord. Your name stands above the 
Oh Lord, we, we, we ask for your freedom. We believe in your freedom. We believe that you set us free. We believe that we can carry no baggage with us because you have said it's gone. I'll carry it for you. You want us to live in freedom. You want us to live knowing forgiveness and blessed by being forgiven. May we bless others. May we show forgiveness to others. May we bring hope in this world. And we do it because you first set us free. You first forgave us. And you continue to bless us. Amen. Have a wonderful week.